there's no denying it. Confidence is so important in the workplace. A high level of confidence will usually lead to a higher achievement. I do want to be very clear, confidence isn't everything. You can't replace knowledge and skill with confidence and expect to get the same results. You've probably seen some super confident people auditioning for the X Factor, but when they open their mouth, it's not so pleasing to the ears. They've got all the confidence, but it's a bit misplaced. So how does confidence impact your career? And how can you increase your confidence in the classroom? Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression, and this video is all about confidence. What it is, why it's important, and some practical ways to increase your confidence. Let's start with, what is confidence? If you think about the word itself and the definition, the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or rely on someone or something. If someone said they had confidence in your ability, you'd take that as a compliment, as they believe in you. But the type of confidence we're going to be talking about is self-confidence. Self-confidence is a belief in oneself, the conviction that you have the ability to meet life's challenges and to succeed, and the willingness to act accordingly. Being confident requires a realistic sense of your own capabilities and feeling secure in that knowledge. Confident people feel secure rather than insecure, but it doesn't mean that you're bulletproof and impervious to bouts of self-doubt. Honesty time, I don't always feel super confident, but over the years I've picked up a few ways to present myself in a confident way. Confidence is not an innate, fixed characteristic. It's an ability that can be acquired and improved over time. It's the result of feeling sure about your abilities and you can have differing levels of confidence in different things. For example, I'm generally confident speaking to people and presenting, but if you ask me a maths question, I lose that confidence immediately. Everyone will be different in terms of how quickly you can gain confidence. Some people will see a new task and be nervous, but after one attempt, feel confident. Someone I know who really worries about public speaking is a bag of nerves when giving a speech, up until he gets his first laugh. Then he's fine. Confidence isn't about feeling superior to others. There's a big difference between arrogance and confidence. Confidence is a trait that involves positively expressing your abilities, while arrogance is often associated with believing you're more intelligent and capable than those around you. So why is it important to be confident? Self-confident affects all areas of life, and it's also a key building block of resilience, as if you're not confident you can do something, then you're likely to not even try. Or if you do give something new a go, you're more likely to give up if something's gone wrong. Confidence helps us feel ready for life's experiences. When we're confident, we're more likely to move forward with people and opportunities, not back away from them. And if things don't work out at first, confidence helps us try again. It's the opposite when confidence is low. Having more confidence doesn't mean that you won't fail. You will, and you may even fail a lot. But you'll know you can deal with challenges that come your way, and you won't be frozen with fear, because you'll understand that even when things don't go your way, you can handle it. As you continue to push yourself to try new things, you'll realise that failure and mistakes lead to growth. The more willing to fail you are, the more likely you are to succeed, because you're trying. You're not just sat back waiting for something to happen, you're making it happen. Self-confidence is an important ingredient for living a happy and fulfilling life. Understanding the benefits of self-confidence is the first step towards living your life as the true, authentic you. When you project confidence, people will see you differently. It can really affect your image and how people perceive you. If you're going to ask someone for advice, you'd go to the person who appears confident as opposed to the person who looks shy and apprehensive. This means that confident people are more likely to be placed in leadership roles. You may have the strongest point in a debate or the best idea in a brainstorming session. But if you're not confident enough to share your opinions, no one will hear it. 
Being more confident in the workplace will mean that you're more likely to engage in new projects that might be outside of your comfort zone and result in you achieving and setting new goals. As you succeed in these new projects, you'll gain trust and confidence from your colleagues and that might lead you to inspire others to do the same. How to increase your confidence. So clearly, having a strong sense of self-confidence is going to support you in life and help you be successful. But how do you increase your confidence? I personally think that the best way to increase confidence is with knowledge. Knowledge is power. And I think of it like a suit of armor. If you're walking into a classroom, knowing exactly what you're teaching, feeling like an expert in the subject, you're going to be more confident. I am always more confident when heading into a training session when I know the material. When you're planning a lesson on World War II, you might research some of the key themes from the curriculum, you maybe use some textbooks with detailed information, but how much more could you do to become an expert? Well, you could watch some documentaries or read books about that time. You could find music or plays that were written at that time maybe find some real life accounts from survivors. Read around the subject, not just the subject itself. It will probably help you become quite creative with your lesson plans as well. You could try positive affirmations. Positive affirmations are positively loaded phrases or statements that are used to challenge unhelpful or negative thoughts. For example, you could say to yourself in the mirror each morning, I am the best version of myself. Practicing affirmations can activate the reward system in your brain, which can have an impact on the way you experience both, both emotional and physical pain. Knowing you have the ability to manage stress and other life difficulties can help boost confidence and self-empowerment, further promoting faith in yourself. This will also help you quiet that negative voice in your head telling you you're not good enough. I used to be really mean to myself, but one day someone said to me, do you ever say those things to your best friend or anyone else? No, of course not. So don't say them to yourself. Stop comparing yourself to other people, whether they're celebrities, people on social media, or just people that you know. Everyone has their own path and not one is better than the other. Exercise is the best medicine for everything. I go to a body combat session on a Saturday morning and I come out feeling invincible. That works for me, but find something that works for you. Yoga, HIIT, Zumba, whatever it is, exercise creates endorphins which make you feel happy and good about yourself. Loosen your jaw and shoulders. It sounds simplistic, but it works. If you consciously loosen your jaw, neck and shoulders, you'll feel your anxiety decrease and your confidence go up. Physiologically, our emotions respond to changes in our physical state, just as much as our physical state responds to our emotions. It's not a one-way street. And lastly, feel the fear and do it anyway. Push yourself. Even if you don't feel confident, go for it. You might surprise yourself. How do you convey confidence? As I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes you might not feel confident, but you can still exude it. Maintain eye contact. People who can hold eye contact calmly convey greater confidence than those who don't. Notice the word calmly. If you fidget and get nervous with prolonged eye contact, you'll have to work on it. I also don't mean stare at them. Stand tall. This doesn't mean be tall. I mean, pull your shoulders back and have good posture. Ensuring you've got good posture is generally just good for you, but holding yourself well shows people that you're not hiding away or shrinking into yourself. Avoid fidgeting and think about what your hands are doing. When people are nervous, they play with their hands, their clothes, their hair. By not doing that, you convey a more confident demeanor. See our video, Calm Communication, for more information on how to convey open and positive body language. Speaking too quickly or at a low volume can make you appear less than confident. It also leaves you vulnerable to saying things you don't mean or rambling. Speaking slowly and clearly 
Take your time with your sentences. It'll give you time to come up with better word choices and will make you seem more confident at the same time. Practice articulating your words clearly in a loud voice so you're used to the approach. And lastly, smile. A smile goes a long way. And if you're uncomfortable in a situation, you may end up accidentally frowning. A warm, genuine smile will help you feel more relaxed and will allow those around you to feel more comfortable in your presence. We've put together some resources that we think will help you surround yourself with positive and motivational content. I subscribe to a YouTube channel called Charisma On Command. This channel has videos to help you learn how to be more confident, how to make people laugh, how to be more likeable. Basically, everything about exuding charisma. It's also entertaining. A great podcast to try is the Self Esteem and Confidence Mindset podcast. These are bite sized 15, 20 minute podcasts for people who want to boost confidence and personal growth. I've always found that certain songs can give me a boost in confidence. Singing along to Lizzo will always make me feel bulletproof. Coldplay, not so much. Think about what you like that also has a positive message. Listen to it before you start work or go into any situation where you need a boost. Confidence is key in the workplace. Self-confidence promotes more successful interviews and ensures that you perform better in your job position. Developing your self-confidence requires some self-reflection and knowledge of what causes you to feel less confident. By identifying this, you can experience more success in your personal and professional life. I've been Natalie from My Progression, and if you've enjoyed this video on increasing your confidence, then like, subscribe, and click on the bell to keep hearing more from My Progression. And let's keep your career in motion.